Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Don't go anywhere. Today we have a uh, Catholic surfing priest, Father Don Calloway, is going to be joining us. Uh, but I always start the show now. My wife has encouraged me to always start the show by making the sign of the cross in Hawaiian. So, Makaino o kamakua kekeki ameke ohana hemalele. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Isn't it great how the good news has gone throughout the whole world? And uh, it's so precious to to go to Mass here and hear some of the some of the prayers in, in uh, the sign of the cross in Hawaiian. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure, coming to you from Waikiki Beach. It's a beautiful day in paradise. Uh, we have the big Duke Ocean Festival going on this week. It's uh, in honor of my boyhood hero, Duke Kahanamoku, who was an Olympic swimmer and uh, spread the Aloha of tandem surfing and regular surfing all over the world and was a, a, a great epic sailor. He sailed uh, boats from uh, the, the, the Transpac uh, races from... Uh, from Long Beach over here to uh, Oahu, and so it's a great celebration. It's a time when all of the watermen from around the islands and even from around the world come together, and it's been a real sacred time here, too, because we've had uh, the experience here in the last, we're recording this show, but right now it's still very raw and real. Uh, uh, about two weeks ago, we had the hurricane come through, uh, high winds hit uh, Maui, and, uh, and uh, of course, just devastated our very precious town of Lahaina. It's a, it's it's a very very precious town. It was one of the original uh, places for the Kingdom of Hawaii, the 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 uh, headquarters there back in the day, and it, it was a whaling community too. And from Lahaina, you can look across and see Molokai just across the channel. And my father actually was a uh, Catholic deacon at this church called Maria Lanakila. It means Mary, Our Lady of Victory that I don't know if you heard about it, but the, uh, the church is still standing. Everything around it, if you look at the pictures, the school that belonged to the church is gone, but, but all the buildings around, concrete or whatever, are just gone. But uh, Maria Lanaquila is still standing. And uh, we have with us today someone who I know loves Our Lady, uh, Father Don Calloway. So, Father Don, welcome to the show. Thanks, brother. Yeah, what, I... Uh... I'm, it's good to be with you. And the sign of the cross in Hawaiian, how cool is that? Yeah, isn't that beautiful? When I, actually, Father, when I go out to, every day I go out for an hour and just tread water uh, as part of my regimen, my workout regimen. And Cindy will join me for the first 30 or 40 minutes. But when she paddles in, then I just meditate on, uh, on uh, one of the names of the Holy Spirit. And I'll tell mm. you, I've always had a real problem with Father God. You know, I, I think a lot of men have a Father wound or something like that not to say that my father wasn't a great dad but just there's kind of like this i think of him as this kind of stern god which i know is not true so mm. i i say i say uh, uh makua instead of father and it makes it just opens the door to my heart to receive the father's love because mm. it, just the word father has this this i don't know i don't know why i'm like that but that's the way it is but i'll meditate on the father or the son of the holy spirit or, or meditate on mary just that whole time out there and i i close my eyes and the waves are lifting me and dropping me and i just sense that just the beautiful presence of the lord but i wanted to bring up the maria lanaquila because i know your devotion to mary have you heard about what what's happened with that church i did i've seen pictures and it's i mean it looks like you know hiroshima went off there and, yes. and yet church is still there it's that that's that's a miracle brother that's a miracle yeah that's not a symbol of hope that is hope itself that's jesus yep. christ right there yeah absolutely absolutely and you know i have i have a surfing buddy who lived in san diego and uh you know i, I would surf with him all the time at blacks last year he and his wife moved to lahaina and they mm. lost everything no they lost everything. They're, they're staying in a hotel there which is where he was working mm. they lost everything I'm so sorry to hear that. You know, my mo mother and father are no longer in Lahaina. They would have been about a mile away from where that, that happened. But we have so many great friends. Archie Kalepa, who used to be the head lifeguard there, he was in Lake Tahoe when he heard about it. He got on a plane and uh, got right back to Lahaina. But he was, in some ways, it was good because he had cell phone coverage and access to Internet. You know, 
and his house wasn't hit. And we have mayors, we have government leaders, but then we have well, government officials, but then we have leaders like Archie Kalepa, the great big wave rider, tandem surfer. And he uh, he's just become the leader there, and, and all the local, it's the local people that are doing it. The government's there to do all that they can, but it's nothing like the local people. And so the local yeah. people came together at Maria Lanaquila Church, uh, the the I think the second Sunday after the fire, and, and worshiped. Right, wow. in the, right wow. in the midst of all of that. And I'm seeing this beautiful statue of Mary behind you. I just know that. Yeah. that do you know uh, when we rode with Archbishop Wensky down to um, Key West, we had cigars that night, and then he then we had mass at the Basilica. And he told me, uh, he wrote, me, wrote to me a few weeks later after that big hurricane hit Key West. Uh-huh. He wrote to me and he said that the church was fine. It wasn't touched. In fact, the candles that were burning outside in the grotto were not even blown out. That's amazing. I mean, I've heard so many of these stories and seen pictures that after big storms or earthquakes, generally there's a statue of Our Lady or a church that's still standing in the midst of the rubble. I mean, I think that's, it's definitely God saying, look, yes, this is tragic, um, but I'm still with you. I haven't abandoned you. And, you know, come to me now. The church is still here for you. I mean, it happens time and time again. It's it's incredible. Yeah, it, it, it's it's heartbreaking. Uh, you know, my dad probably married and a lot of those people that were in that town as a de- deacon. And uh, mm-hmm. I know I know uh, the profound impact he had at burials too. What a great time to, to comfort and to be a witness. But there were people, there families there, almost like they said uh, that volcano, Vesuvius was it, where they, the Pompeii, where they would just see people sitting at a table. There, there's families that were holding each other. Wow. When, wow. And uh, it talks to, it just talks to Ohana and just the reality that we don't yeah. know the hour of the day. Mother Angelica used to say, you, every year you pass the day that you're going to die on the calendar, you just don't know that that's the, the month and the day. And so we have to... Oh, that's an insight. That's a meditation right there, for sure. Yeah, just, just, to, just to meditate on, well, memento mori, remember our death. Where it's, it's something we all know is coming. And right. so why not live, uh, live uh, for Jesus? Mm. We live for Amen, eternity. brother. Amen. Amen. I remember when we were with you in, in Israel and your mother was such a great example of Mary to all of us because she, you were so busy, we would go to her and say, hey, can you ask Father Don about this or about that? And she would always go and intercede with you. And then after a while, I go, oh my gosh. So I tell, tell, tell us about, so she's such a great example of Mary. Tell us about what you're doing with your, your are the pilgrimages back online now? Yeah. So, you know, during COVID, of course, I wasn't able to do those. Um, but now I'm, I'm doing them. I'm doing three to four pilgrimages a year. And my mom still goes. She goes on about half of them with me. Um, my dad is retired now. So he's like, well, don't leave me. Don't be traveling all around the world. I'm, I'm here home now. Yeah. Um, so we go on about two a year, but then I do four a year myself. But yeah, got great ones coming up. I love those things. As you know, I mean, they're rejuvenating. Um, they just refresh your soul. You come back. You just feel like, I don't know. It's like a romance with God. You know those yeah, pilgrimages. Yeah. Where are, so you where are you going? Where you Where are you going? This. In the yeah. Next so year. every year now in January, I go down to Mexico to Our Lady of Guadalupe. Wow. That's become yeah. an annual one for me. Mm. Love it. It's just it's super super easy pilgrimage too for us at least in the mainland because. Yeah. You know, it's one flight or two at the most. You're there by lunch. There's no jet lag. So it's yeah. fantastic. Right. Um, right. From Hawaii, it'd be a little, you know, more complicated. Yeah, everything's but... a little bit more for me. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We got to do a pilgrimage to Hawaii. You know? uh, we could go to um, uh, St. Damien, St. Marianne, and Molokai. My dad was a deacon there, too, by the way. Dude, I went, um, this was like 15 years ago. I went to Molokai. Um, I was speaking in uh, Oahu. I forget where it was. I think it was Waikiki, actually. And um, a Filipino lady, Rose, who no longer is with us, really mm. saintly woman, mm. she took all the speakers after the conference over to Molokai. Wow. And uh, that was extraordinary. I mean, seeing those cliffs, you know, and the uh-huh. whole thing. You know, that, you know that they were not able to get out of there. I mean, the, I've, walked down right. those, I've walked down those cliffs several times, but I actually never had access to, to where the... St. Damien Mar- and St. Marianne were there with the, with the, with the leper colonies, but it's, it's, it's yep. the, high, the highest sea cliffs in the world. And then that little peninsula, and it's yep. on the north side, so huge surf breaks in there. They were, once you were put there on that island, you were going to stay there. But when you yeah. go to Molokai, did you feel, I feel like a sense of the Holy Spirit when I land there. I just sense God's grace, you know, where there's suffering, yep. God's spirit is there. 
Yep, I know. I agree. We felt that too, and uh, we we were able to go down, you know, to that area to the leper colony, and um, yeah, you could see like it, it was. I mean, how tragic that it was basically the most beautiful prison you could have, right? Because mm. they couldn't escape. And the sad thing is, is my understanding is that, you know, ships would come by and basically just dump the lepers into the sea. Sometimes they would have to. If it was rough seas, they when it was the worst yeah. times, they couldn't get to the dock. And so what yep. do they do in the worst conditions? They would just say, just throw them out. Throw them over. And you, they have leprosy, remember. Many of right. them, they didn't have the limbs to swim. But they would just right. drown. So, yeah. I mean, so much tragedy there. And yet you had great saints come out of there. Um, so, yeah, it was it was awesome. And you do feel the you know where, where there's suffering and there's pain, then the Holy Spirit is is right there to comfort us. So, we bring mm-hmm. that all the way back to what we started talking about, uh, Lahaina, um, yeah, and the miracle there of the Maria Lanakila Church still standing and mass being said there today. Uh, it's mm-hmm. actually the vicar's uh, the church, the vicar to the bishop there in Maui. We're talking with Father Don Calloway, and we're gonna we're gonna he's got so much on his plate, uh, and we're gonna be talking about some of his projects and and what the Lord has been ta- talking to him about. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Venture. I'm so excited to tell you about my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? It, it's kind of based on... Uh, on my favorite, one of my favorite authors, Louis Lamore, the great Western writer, who his men were always virtuous and the women were always strong, and uh, and um, kind of challenging men or encouraging men to go back to that cowboy sort of code, uh, and really mostly focused on the the cardinal virtues the, of justice, self mastery, fortitude, and prudence. Uh, but bringing out that cowboy mystique as a way for us to kind of really grapple with and get an understanding of what it means to be a man, and then we and then we talk about intimacy with God and the and the three uh, theological virtues of faith, hope, and love too. But uh, I love the book. I mean, it's like people tell me, "What's your favorite book?" Well, they're all my children. I like all my children the same. Yeah, I, li- I like them all in a special way. But I encourage you to go to uh, Amazon.com or Sophia or any of your Catholic bookstores or Barnes and Noble and pick up this book. Uh, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? And speaking of manliness, I could have based the book on this, the whole book on this man, Father Don Calloway. Hello, Father Don. Welcome back. 
Hey, Bear. Good to be with you, brother. So I, I, when I emailed you and begged you to be on the show, because I know how busy you are, you said you had an epic surf at Black's. I did, yeah. It was awesome. So it was one of those, you know, summertime at Black's is, you know, it is what it is. Most guys are making trips to Indo or to Costa Rica or Nicaragua or something. But uh, occasionally there's a swell that comes in, and I was in town. I was in San Diego for that swell, and it was fantastic because there a lot of the guys, the locals, were away. And so just me and a few friends were just scoring, you know, overhead sets, glassy yeah. eight games. It was fantastic. That's your yeah. favorite spot, isn't it? Or is it your favorite? It's one it of your is. favorite yeah. spots. That's, yeah, it's basically my home break. It's, uh, it's my favorite beach break in Southern California. It just uh, It can hold the big stuff. And it's just a beautiful, picturesque paradise. Yeah, beautiful. Just beautiful. We had we had a uh, great surf here this week. Cindy and I were surfing in the tandem surfing expression sessions. And uh, yesterday we had this, I don't know, it was wedging. You know, it was wedging. Right. So there was this, as the, as the waves would roll in out of the deep, all of a sudden it would kind of wedge up and just like propel you into the wave. And yeah. we made uh, we made a couple really great drops, and she's so valiant. She helps me so much when we she paddles so hard, and she's suspended out over the wave. You know, when you're dropping in on a hollow wave, the she's way out yeah. in front, so she's paddling, yeah. but there's only air beneath her. And then finally, we make that drop, and it's a really really a great uh, illustration of a, a valiant woman. You know, who's one with nice. her, helping her man, and one one with one with her husband, and. And then we do this beautiful expression of, of lifting her. But yeah, so when are we going to get you out here to Hawaii to go surfing? Yeah, I don't know. I would love to. I haven't been to Hawaii now probably in, oh my goodness, maybe seven or eight years, something like that. So yeah, I got to make it happen one of these days. And we have, we have, I know I know when you come out, you you want to minister. We have a studio here for you that uh, if, if it's not, it's often quite available to priests if if, if there's no one renting it. So we have to make that happen. But I'm getting I'm getting sidetracked. I was thinking now about Tel Aviv and when Cindy and I got to tandem surf in Tel Aviv. That was a great yeah. day. Uh, but I was so, jealous. I was jealous because I think you didn't. You guys fly in like a day or two before we did. Yeah, and we got the Christmas swell. We got a Christmas oh, present, and we we, so pad jealous. we paddled out there, and there was no. Uh, there was a, ha a dozen people out there, and they're wondering, what are these guy and this girl doing on this same surfboard? Because we had borrowed the biggest stand-up mm. paddleboard that we could get. And this guy paddles over and says, you guys, uh, you guys know how to surf? And I go, no, we never this is our first time. And then we dropped in and did a lift, and then we became friends with all of them. So, yeah, so I we got to do – I would love to go to Israel again and go surf Tel Aviv. If there's but I, I think what you're not saying, though, is didn't they recognize you in the surf store or something? Yeah, like that? yeah. There was a guy blocking my path on the way up from the beach, and he goes, "Are you Bear Wozniak?" And I go, "Yeah." And it turns out that my picture was in his in his surf shop. Yeah. And it was yeah, there yeah, yeah. because it was there because my good friend Doc Paskowitz is who has now passed away. <laughs> Uh, he, as he said, do you, I said, do you know Doc Paskowitz? And I go, Doc Paskowitz? So he pronounced it properly. He said, yeah, he taught my dad how to surf. And there's all these pictures of Doc in the, Doc up there. And of course, he surfed into his 90s. So, Wow, wow. But we better get talking about other stuff, Father Don. We'll get, catch up. <laughs> so I, I really dig what, what you did with this new uh, novel. I think it's uh, so important. Uh, it's a graphic yeah. novel. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, I've been really doing a lot of stuff with St. Joseph um, over the last three, four years. And a lot of people said, you know, Father, um, the graphic novels, basically a comic book, are super popular right now for the young kids, but also like adults. Like, And so they said, you should think about doing one. And I thought, that's a great idea. I, that never even crossed my mind for me to do a graphic novel, a comic book. But I got this um, friend who's an artist of like next level stuff. He's I've, so good. Yeah, I've seen it. The, you showed me the oh. pictures. Yeah, why don't look you show at, it? The, yeah, yeah, look at that. Oh, I love. I, mean, the, I love the cover. I love the the, the heart there. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So, and the inside, you know, it's got me teaching a family all about Saint Joseph. Oh, you know, that's cool. That's so cool. That's who that. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. You, yeah. He makes I, you look. He makes you look much better looking than you are, though. So. Dude, totally. Yeah. And I was like, I, I said, yeah, make me young, make my hair, get rid of that bald spot, you know? So, the wonder of art. So, um, so, listen to this, though. This is crazy. So, we didn't think it would sell that well because we've never done this kind of thing. So, we only printed 3,000 copies. They sold in four days. 3,000 wow. copies. Wow. Yeah, crazy. Wow. So, right now, it's, it's on back order. But if people want to get it, you know, in time for Christmas, it'll be available again at the beginning of October. Um, the, the Chaste Heart of St. Joseph by Father Don Kellaway. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's the title. 
And um, yeah, you can get it on Amazon, of course, and then fathercalloway.com, you can get it. So get a copy, you'll love it. It's a great idea. I know when I was teaching, uh, I used to have a youth group and so many of them had never even been to church and I would give them a comic book series uh, that basically gave them the overview of the Bible. So at least they knew the stories, you know, it wasn't, and and, and I know, um, uh, Anthony DiStefano is doing these graphic type things and also um, Raymond Arroyo. So there's a, yep. there's a reason for it. And it's, I think especially now when so many children are being homeschooled, they can yep. use that in their curriculum and then just a family prayer time at night to read a few pages and you don't have to be in a rush to finish it, but t- dialogue about it. What, what is the key element, key uh, point of the book? Yeah, so it's basically the setting, if you will, is it's got me in cartoon form at the Shrine of Divine Mercy in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. And this family, after mass, they ask me, Father, we've heard you've ta- written about St. Joseph. We don't know too much about him. Would you be willing to share some time with us and teach us about St. Joseph? So I just launch it from there and we start talking about his virtues, about his marriage with Our Lady, all those different aspects. And then I go into saints that promoted him, shrines dedicated to him. And it's, it's 80 pages of really meaty stuff, but written in a simple way. And at the end of it, it has like the litany of St. Joseph. It's got a consecration prayer that children or families can do together. Yeah, it's it's super cool. I never thought I'd do something like that. Oh, I think it's awesome. Uh, it, it, it And you know what they say is to write a book like that is harder than to write any other book because you know, it's got to have the same arc of a book but yeah. with simpler words so it, it, they say it's actually harder to write a book like that do you think that's that's true you got to there's watch. truth to that yeah, yeah i can i can crank out like a theological article but to put it in three sentences in a little cloud above some cartoon's head yeah that's tough yeah <laughs> that's and, really tough. <laughs> and, and but you think about god he had to hit all the stuff that god wants to tell us he put into a bible well not all, everything but just think about it. he must have edited that, that thing down too but uh, but yeah the, the uh but my mother used to say that uh Christianity is an elevator religion. Mm. It's simple enough in some ways that you could tell someone the gospel by the time you get on the elevator and the time you get off. Mm. And then and then it just goes so deep and so wide, especially our Catholic faith. But yeah, so it, you're, if you can express it to a child, then you can then that same message can go to an adult. But your last one of the books you wrote a couple of years ago was was it Saint Joseph's Terror of Demons? Was that the name of the book? Or? It was um, Consecration to Saint Joseph. But in there, yeah. you refer to him as the terror of demons. Oh, um, yeah. That's my favorite title because it's one of the titles in his litany. And I mean, I don't know. When I talk to most guys, they're like, yeah, that's the title. That's the money title. That's, you know, because I mean, that's an intimidating title, terror of mm-hmm. demons um, from a guy who never said nothing. You know what I mean? We don't have one word from him in the New Testament. Um, and yet demons are absolutely horrified of him because he's so holy. Mm. Yeah, he's, he's devoted to Mary, devoted to the Son, devoted to the Father, and he too gave his own caveat and said yes, you know, yes to the Lord. Well, yeah. um, we're going to take a break here. We're talking with Father Don Calloway. So the new book is called what again? It's The Chaste Heart of St. Joseph, a graphic novel. Yeah. And so so Fa- Father Calloway is here as the Father Calloway I met many years ago, but I think the last time or the time before when we, we, when we had a conversation, you looked like a, a Greek Orthodox one of the early fathers you had. How, how long was that beard? Oh, my goodness. You couldn't even see my Roman collar. It was like down to here. And, um, and, and when you surfed, did you how, did you stick it? In, was it inside the wetsuit or outside the wetsuit? How, it you was it? outside the wetsuit, but it was so long that it was like it was a stall, new stall method. I, I could, you know, it was in the water when I was paddling because <laughs> it was so long. <laughs> We're talking about Father Don Calloway. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We're going to uh, get right back and talk with Father Don more about St. Joseph and, of course, his mother, his love for the Lord and for Mary. We'll be right back. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up, Wholesome. Wholesome is what I call a pleasurable word. I liken it to warm, fresh, homemade bread and butter. Wholesomeness is sorely needed in this surly, sour world of ours. Same could be said of terms like well-rounded, kind, and considerate. All adjectives that should describe every Christian. 
Back in the early 1990s, I was a speaker at an environmental conference on sustainable development in Seattle, Washington. Coming upon the entryway to the auditorium, I opened the door for three feminist lady friends. They were just a little bit upset that I did so. I answered their crossway looks with, Ladies, my mom alert me to do such things, and mom is still talking to me from heaven about being helpful and considerate. It's just the way it is. I'm drawn to wholesome people, not so much the flashy, charismatic, hot, or popular folks. To be wholesome means to be life-giving, to be nourishing. My mama, while winsome and playful, was one wholesome lady, gave life to everyone that entered her doors, whether it was kind and wise words, a genuine simple sense she understood and cared about each person, or serving up her famous homemade clam chowder, fresh-baked bread, and cinnamon rolls to whomever entered her doorway. From the time we were on our mother's breast, we were wired to be nourished by others. My guess is that many men or women who have been only attracted to those they saw as hot or popular or charismatic later wish they had instead looked for a wholesome person, someone kind, considerate, and caring, like a wholesome piece of whole wheat bread instead of another cupcake. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos, Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to remind all the mama bears out there to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and become a member of the mama bears. We have a one-year curriculum there on the virtues for you, but also you get early access to our, our radio show. The, the YouTube version of it is sent out to you, and also you have access to all of the Long Ride Home television series, and there's the new first uh, new new season is out now on EWTN. 11 new episodes, all filmed here in Hawaii. So there's 33 episodes, four seasons of Long Ride Home, which as you know, Mama Bears, it's a great way to get your men uh, connected into a deeper walk with the Lord because they see these gnarly guys riding motorcycles and they find out they have a heart for Jesus. So uh, we love you, Mama Bears. You, you know, when, when we go into church in the morning, we have Father Don Calloway with us. You know, Father, when I go into Mass in the mornings, the first people there are these ladies. They're the yeah. warriors. They're the ferocious mama bears. They're the ones that really are moving our ministries as those mama bears that pray the rosary, pray like that. Oh, I, I know that well, brother. I know that well. Without those faithful ladies, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Tell, to, int, can you introduce people a little bit about uh, your own conversion experience? Because we haven't talked about that in a while. And mm, I, yeah, I, sure. And, and we're, saying, we're sharing this for a reason. We want uh, men out there or everyone to listen to this. Because uh, God has a, a journey for everyone. He's drawing all, all yeah. people to him. Yeah, it's amazing that you're asking this uh, because, believe it or not, next year I'm scheduled to go back to Japan and to speak, a speaking tour. And I haven't been to Japan since I got kicked out, you know, 30 years ago. So that's part of the significance of this is that, you know, my early youth and adulthood 
was so bad. You know, I wasn't Catholic and went to two rehabs, got thrown in jail multiple times, got kicked out of the country of Japan for criminal activity, had long hair down to my waist and that whole thing. But then Our Lady got me. Our Lady got me in a huge way and brought me to Jesus. How did that happen? What, what do you so mean So I read a lady? book. Yeah, I read a So my parents, so this is what's crazy. Um, my parents had a huge conversion to Catholicism two years before I did. Mm. basically because I drove them nuts and they needed God to deal with me, you know? Yeah. Um, and so they bought all kinds of books and stuff about the Catholicism and the saints. And one night, rock bottom, I was at their house and I picked up a book on Our Lady. And I started to read that thing. And that book was the catalyst that changed my life. I fell madly in love with the Blessed Virgin Mary. She was like the woman of my dreams. And she brought me to Jesus and the Catholic Church. And Everything snowballed so fast, became Catholic within one year, and then got my call, responded to become a priest, and then had to study for 10 years to do it, which was torturous, 10 years. I mean, that was a really long time, but I needed it. I needed to mature and, you know, all that. It was good. It was good. Um, and now I've been ordained a priest for 20 years. And next year, finally, I'm going back to Japan. Um, They're going to let so you in? Well, that's the question. So if nobody, <laughs> if nobody hears from me after next year, say a prayer, I'm probably yeah. locked up. <laughs> hope well, the statute of limitations has expired by now, hopefully. I, I'm sure it has. Yeah, I'm sure it has. But um, I'm excited. I can't. What's your? What are you going to be doing there? So I'm going to be going actually to Catholic parishes there, which, you know, Japan is, is not very Catholic. It's never really been very Catholic. Great saints like St. Saint Maximilian Kolbe have tried, but it's a difficult Asian culture to get Catholicism into because their understanding of a God who dies is a failure, right? When when they mm. fail, That's they samurai. kill them. Right. That's samurai. right. So they have a hard time understanding a triumphant Messiah who dies on a cross. It, it, to them, that's a failure. It's really hard to get into that culture. Um, so I'm going to go to parishes, but I'm going to go to the military installations, oh, you know, my yeah. stomping grounds. Right. Yeah. Yes. We're so... That's going to be incredible because yeah. that's my people, man. So I'm going to be able to talk to them in the military chapels and 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 witness to them. Well, I know if you need a videographer or two, my two sons love Japan, and they've nice. uh, Shane landed there once but didn't get to go. But if you if you have any inclined to film anything, uh, they're ready to go. My son uh, Shane rides his bicycle, uh, his indoor bicycle, and he puts on a he puts on a, uh, a video of Japan. So he's pedaling his bicycle through all these back places in Japan. So, yeah, Japan is beautiful. Japan is so beautiful and it's so pristine. It's like mm -hmm. so clean yes. and just, yeah, it's super nice. And the culture, you know, we have so, so you know, Hawaii is the most diverse place in the whole world. We have mm. so many Japanese uh, descendants here. Uh, yeah. And then we also have so many Japanese visitors. And I always love to see them as families. There's a real, there's a real, um, respect for the parents and a real devotion to from the parents to the children it's really beautiful to see they're they're a great yep. example for us in, in in those ways so um yep. so you, can you tell us uh so you're going to go to mexico and then where else are you going to go yeah so let's see mexico then i've got greece um which includes a, a cruise i've never been to is greece, this is so this I'm... are you following the footsteps of saint paul yeah 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 yeah, and then we're going, part of it is to go to Ephesus in Turkey to uh, Mary's house. Yes, I've been there, yeah. Have you been there yet? No. I've been somewhere wait. you haven't been? <laughs> I know, right? Totally. Yeah. I can't wait, man. I cannot wait. And then I'm going, I'm doing the one again that you and I did. I'm doing the Holy Land um, mm. right after Christmas in 2024. I love going at that time. It's like my sixth trip to the Holy Land. Because it's the Christmas season. When you go to Bethlehem, it's like incredible. And then being in the Holy Land at that time, the temperature is fantastic. It's not mm -hmm, hot. Mm -hmm. And being there for New Year's in the Holy Land, pretty epic. So doing Do that one too. I remember I asked you what your favorite place was. This is before I, I, I went there. And it yeah. turned out it was my favorite place too. I think you said the Sea of Galilee. Yes, sir. Absolutely. That place to me, you know, it's amazing that 2,000 years have gone by and it's still pretty much undeveloped. Mm -hmm. It's it blows my mind. I mean, this is the the beginning of Christianity. This is where the Messiah lived, you know, right up the road from the Sea of Galilee, um, and yet you're seeing the exact same stuff that Jesus saw. I mean, mm -hmm. it hasn't been developed. That it, it just 
I could live there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know? absolutely. And you know, and you, and then you think of Saint, you think of Saint Peter over there on the north. Uh, well, they were on the north side, weren't they? I forget where he, he was on the north side. But, I'm not sure. But when you yeah, see no. these little fishing villages, and you realize these men had, of course, it was a tough life, but they had there was a serenity there. And now God's mm-hmm. saying, okay, uh, Saint Thomas, you can go to India, and Peter, you're gonna, you know, and, and going into these cities and grinding out and work and working and sharing the Lord. They they left this beautiful, serene place. To bring yeah. people to a better place, a better place than even yeah. that. So you just see. So the- true, so true, and it is a beautiful place, right? I remember, you know, I have to say, I, I'm, I'm almost making a confession here as a priest. For the longest time, people said to me, "Father, you need to go to the Holy Land." Before I ever went, and I was like, "Nah, I'm good." You know, I I thought the Holy Land meant I was going to go and like be beheaded by some radical dude, and I it would be dirty and nasty. I could not have been more wrong. Like. Mm-hmm. Just the banana groves and the beauty of the land and the Sea of Galilee. Mm. Man, I was so wrong. That place is is fantastic. Caesarea, the, the, Tel Aviv. I know mm-hmm. we went there. We when we were with you, that was just a few days after um, uh, Trump moved the the headquarters or what is it the, the the embassy to Jerusalem. That's right. And That's we right. thought there was and there were some problems, but you know we really. But what you see there though among the Jewish people. Is I mean there is a there are people living out their faith out in the open the, the, you know the way they dress and their and their prayers and yet they know they're it's a dangerous place to live out live out your faith as a Christian or a Jew or or even maybe as a Muslim there you know it's there's you just gotta I'm, you know people make a stand for their faith and, oh oh my goodness do they I mean if, if you're not into religion at all and you go there it's gonna be a shock to the system <laughs> yeah I mean yeah. everybody is expressing it you know? yeah in a very you know but there's a boldness there and you can there's a witness there when you see uh, I, I know I was on a plane once and a, an Orthodox Jew uh, stood up and faced I guess the East I forget which way he faced and he said mm-hmm. his prayers and going mm-hmm. to the Wailing Wall and seeing all that but you see uh, you see this you but in that you see a certain religiosity you, mm-hmm. and, as opposed to seeing people that really seem to know God, that it seems like they're trying to uh, to please Him or appease Him, as far as as opposed to just love Him back. Do you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Is that is that right? Do. You think? Oh no, absolutely. I mean, I think that their intentions are good. Sometimes, obviously, yes. there's yeah. the misguidedness, and they don't have the fullness of the truth, right? But there's there's a zeal for God, and that's yes. good. Yes, that's yes, good. yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what was it? Uh, the, the scripture verse about Jesus' zeal, zeal for the Lord uh, uh, would th- mm-hmm. throw him on the chariots of his people. I forget exactly how that goes. We're talking with mm-hmm. Father Don Calloway. Can you tell us the name of uh, the, the new graphic novel again? Yeah, it's The Chaste Heart of St. Joseph. I don't know if it's got a glare on it, but The Chaste Heart of St. Joseph. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can get it pretty much everywhere, but a good place to get it because you support my religious community is fathercalloway.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, my religious community set that website up for me, so that's probably the best place, yeah. And then when we get back uh, from this break, let's talk about your uh, the Eucharistic book that you just that you just came out with just a few months before this last book. We're talking with Father yeah. Don Calloway. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure, and we'll be right back with more. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different Tally Awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wastick Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism 
in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to talk to the men here for a moment. Men, do you ever uh, come home and your, your, your children are around you and your sons are there? Maybe they're in junior high or high school or even college. And you say, how did your day go? How did your day go? Oh, okay. Oh, what did you do? Oh, it's the same old thing. And it's just really hard to kind of get any traction with any sort of conversation with them about anything significant. Well, if you go to deepadventure.com and you become a member of the Man Cave and Bear School of uh, Manliness, what happens is you become a, you become part of the Man Cave, which is a non-Facebook community where we get pretty gritty and pretty real. real. It's kind of like the Cave of Adullam for men. It's the where the, the all the misfits went to the cave with, with David and they became the mighty men of valor. As the, as the Lord worked with them. So it's a great place for you to grow. Uh, and we go through the, the School of Manliness one, one chapter at a time, in the one month, a, one, month a, uh, one month at a time, one lesson at a time. But you as a father can lead your son through the School of Manliness. You can, you can uh, and, and the School of Manliness every month has video, uh, short clips, long, long, long videos. Uh, maybe one, one of our Long Ride Home shows fits it perfectly, or a friend of ours, Daniel Markham, or other people have made contributions, Father Bryce Lundgren, the Catholic cowboy priest from Wyoming. And we, uh, we have that, uh, you have opportunity to have them watch different things and track how they're doing in their lessons and go through that with them and uh, uh, give them a self-assessment. They can do a self-assessment and set goals. So fathers, it's a great way to lead your sons into being a man at a critical time when they're about confirmation age or older. So we encourage you to go to deepadventure.com and join the man cave in the School of Manliness. We're here with Father Don Calloway. Doesn't that sound pretty good, Father, to have that sort of... Yep. Sounds super awesome. That's exactly what we need today because there's an attack on manhood, attack on fatherhood. So this is a great, I think, tool to help people to come back to the basics because a lot of times people today have forgotten it or they've had it taken out of them by the culture. And I think what you're doing with, the, especially, you know, your, your, your book, you know, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? I love that subtitle. I mean, that's what we need today. Good stuff. Yeah, we're, I'm going to go to the Tampa, Tampa Men's Conference and uh, I'll be speaking there this coming year and they, 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 their conference name is uh, Catholic Masculinity and I go, dudes, change it to Catholic Manliness. You, <laughs> you, know, you know what the root word for virtue is, isn't that? The, what the word ver means, because you're a priest, man. you know, it means man. Yep. Right. So the, mm -hmm. so the right. root word for virtue is man. I think, I, you're the, I think you're the one that clued me into that actually. Hmm, really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. A lot of, a few times ago. But we're talking with Father Don Calloway, and in this time of uh, really considering uh, the beauty and the power and the presence of God in the Eucharist, tell us about your, your book on the Eucharist. Yeah, so a few months ago, I put out a book called Eucharistic Gems, um, Daily Wisdom on the Blessed Sacrament. Because right now, you know, we've got this Eucharistic revival going on where we're trying to get people, you know, to come back to that central aspect of our faith, the source and summit, you know, the Eucharist, the Holy Communion, Blessed Sacrament. And so what I did was I, I did a lot of research collecting quotes on the Eucharist from saints, mystics, blessed, popes, uh, for every day of the year. And some of them are off the charts and translated for the first time in English. So that came out a couple months ago. And it's doing really well. It's, you know, in all the bookstores and Amazon, all that stuff. So Eucharistic Gems. But check this out, Bear. This thing that I just finished, literally just sealed the deal, did all the edits. Everything's been approved um, by my superiors. So I've got a new book coming out on the Eucharist, um, probably in December, called um, 30 Day Eucharistic Revival, a retreat with St. Peter Julian Imard. Mm. It's been called the Apostle of the Eucharist by several popes. Um, his writings on the Eucharist are next level. Nobody compares to what that French saint has written about the Eucharist. And so I do 30 days of his stuff with my own like commentary on it. And it's hard hitting, man. It's like, mm. we need to bring the tabernacles back to the sanctuary. We mm -hmm. need to stop all these abuses. We need to have more reverence for the Blessed Sacrament um, so that this Eucharistic revival doesn't burn out because it's 
it's going to end at some point, like when, you know, that big Congress happens next year and the follow up mm. to that. But let's not let it die. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's let's keep the enthusiasm for the Eucharist ongoing for generations, man. And so I'm hoping that that book will be a big part of that. And what is the Eucharist? Yeah, I know, let me ask you a couple. Maybe that's not quite the right question, but some of the gems that come to your mind right now about about mm. the Eucharist in the in, in that in that book. What 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 really yeah. hit you? That was you hit you from a new angle. I think like there's one from this woman that I really didn't know much about. Her name is Blessed Dina Belanger. She was um, from Canada, and it's probably my favorite quote in the book. And I put it actually at the beginning of the book too. She says basically, if people realize that God is truly present in the Eucharist, they would have to protect Catholic churches with, you know, a fortress because people would be breaking them down to get in in awe of this divine romance. And I'm like, heck yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is so true. And I think that's what the saints, I think, bring to this is like, you know, a lot of people go to mass and they're like, oh, I'm bored or, you know, it, do it doesn't do it for me. And I'm like, it's God. I mean, yeah, it requires faith for sure. But what more do you got? want god has made himself edible consumable mm -hmm. you can eat love right in the blessed mm -hmm. sacrament i mean this is the stuff that couples dream about you know that they stuff that we talk about when we see a, an adorable little baby we're like um yum 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 i'm gonna eat you <laughs> up right we don't eat babies and you don't eat your spouse but there's one baby who was born to be consumed jesus christ mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. one lover of our souls that wants to be so united with us that he's inside us in the sacramental way there is no greater love and then the Eucharist. You know, my wife had an insight the other day. She, we, she was, we were been studying Genesis, and she was saying, you know, how the how in the Bible the, the Lord said, "Thou shalt not eat of this 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 tree, mm. this certain tree." And then she said, "But then in the New Testament, the Bible says, unless you eat of my body and drink of my blood, you can have no part of me.' Mm. What? And so God said, "You shall eat," and every athlete knows. You are what you eat, you know. So to receive Jesus is to become divinized, to become Eucharisted almost. So tell yep. me about what is what happened at that moment when uh, it, it seems to be a great dividing line in people, uh, Cal even among Catholics and certainly Catholics and Protestants, about is this really the body, body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ? Right, and so that's I think what we've got to get back to because he he meant it literally, right? And that's the thing is. You know, there are certain things in the Bible that Jesus meant literally. There's certain things that he didn't mean literally. Like, for example, when he said, if your arm causes you to sin, cut it off. Well, I got both. You got both. So does every Christian I know. Um, so that's not literal. You know, we're not sawing our arms off. It, it's meant to be like, stop sinning, you know. But there's certain things. And this is why we need the church to interpret the scriptures right. for us. Right. Amen. Yeah. Right. So when he says, this is my body, this is my blood, um, he meant it. And you know what's fascinating? I love to tell people this because they don't often realize this. You know, there's only one place in the New Testament where there's 66 verses in the sixth chapter of the book. Only one place in the New mm, Testament. It's the mm. Gospel of John. It's the Eucharistic discourse. So think it through. What did I just allude to? 666. Mm. So what happens in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 66? It's when many disciples say, this is a hard saying about his body and blood. And it says they walked away and went back to their right. jobs. Right? Fallen, fallen man. Yeah. When you walk six. away from the Eucharist, you walk away from life. You mm -hmm. walk away from the source. And so that's so amazing because, you know, you can look at that teaching of Jesus and you can think, okay, like C.S. Lewis said and many other G.K. Chesterton, either he's a madman or he's God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He just told us that that's his flesh and we got to eat it. Well, he's not a madman. Well, you, yeah, he, he didn't. He didn't like say, "Oh, you guys misunderstood." I didn't mean. I didn't mean that literally. It, it, mo, he lost most of his followers. Many so if, of he them, did, yeah. if he meant it allegorically, if or if he meant it as hyperbole, he said, "Wait a minute, guys. Let me give you a new press release. I was just speaking, uh, high, you know, hyperbole." No, he meant it, and most of yeah. his most of his followers left him when he made that statement. Yeah, that's John 666 when they walked away. And so, wow, yeah, so heavy. I never thought of that. Heavy wow. stuff, bro. Yeah. Heavy <laughs> stuff. Wow. And, you know, me as a convert, you know, I searched so many places in life 
for basically communion. I wasn't looking for that. You know, I was looking for happiness and where love never ends and all that kind of stuff. And I used to put little things that look just like Holy Communion on my tongue. I used to do a lot of LSD acid. Looks just like Holy Communion. <laughs> communion to the devil, right? Right. Because I was searching. Well, here we have the answer, the antidote for all that you know, human ills and all that bother society in the Eucharist. It's everything. It's it's Jesus. And so mm. he comes man, the incarnation, and he is resurrected, ascends to his father. But the Blessed Sacrament, the Eucharist, Holy Communion, is the extension of the Eucharist. He's still he, with he us. Left, he left, but he was still there. I love that moment uh, on the road to Emmaus when at the moment that he blesses the bread, he disappears. But he's mm. there. He's in He's in the... the the Eucharistic hosts of the of the bread right there. I mean, it's, it's yeah. Can and it we, says their eyes were opened, right? And they oh, saw. Oh, and we need we need we need our so many people who don't really know it's the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we just pray that Catholics and non-Catholics would come to that reality. You know, the thing is, is non Protestants don't believe it's the body and blood of Jesus Christ. But when they receive communion, I have to say it, it isn't, because right. it has to be it has to be celebrated by uh, by a priest who's been ordained uh, through apostolic succession. And so it's no yeah. wonder that they have they disregard the communion because to them it's a it's just a symbol it's not the reality of Jesus Christ. Father Father well, Father it. make one more point and then we got then we're fine when we got to break away. No, you're that's a great point and that's why not to show any disrespect to our Protestant brothers and sisters but when the devil wants to desecrate a host they don't go to Protestant churches to get it. They go to a Catholic church because even the devil knows where Jesus is truly present and it's in the Catholic church in the Power. tabernacles powerful. That's a great way to, to end our, our time together today. Father Don Calloway, thank you for being with us. Your new book is, uh, the, the new graphic novel is called what again? The Chaste Heart of St. Joseph. And, uh, yeah. and, and if they go to your website, what is it called? Uh, it's fathercalloway.com. And you got to spell out the father part. So Father Calloway. And all of your books are there. How many books do you have now? 20, 30? I don't know how many. 17, but I'm working on six right now. <laughs> yeah, we, we love you so much. And we got to get to surf again. Well, we never actually have surfed together. We had that one shot in Tel Aviv and someone didn't make it. But uh, yeah. but we, we but uh, <laughs> yeah, we got to do that. We're talking with Father Don Calloway. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. I It had been, it had been almost a year, I think, since we actually talked. And I thought, I just... I just got to call. Yeah. I wish got to get Father Don because our, our people love you so much. Thanks, brother. God bless you. Mahalo, brother. Until, and ne until next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wilding Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wilding Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.